might be of concern would be much smaller than that. But I show that map to you to give you some reference that it's not a county-wide initiative. You can pick and choose where you can go. You have to be selected. And I see. What was the uh, percentage? You said it was 15 percent. 15 percent. or higher. Or higher poverty level. Oh, poverty level. Yes, sir. And so I think the the overall concern about is the investment or time worth it is in the administration. You have to invest in a plan. You then have to have administration to answer general questions and market and prepare various forms for the state. And ultimately, someone has to submit a report to DCA every year that kind of comments on the status within those zones. So you're really um, drilling down into the community for certain areas to try to, um, to, try to see if this benefit is worth it. I don't know enough about tax withholding to see if that is, but I share that because that seems to be the primary motivator for, for these opportunity zones is that tax credit for new jobs. And there is a, a requirement of this that you need to have a full time administrator managing or supervising this program. Yes, sir. There's a requirement of I, I've not got them to comment on you need to have a person. I just think when you look at the administration of it, you're talking about you're talking about someone. You know, I I, I don't know I'm not I'm not the scripture, but I know, you know, for example, if you look at planning with Trini and myself, you're you're talking about shifting responsibilities around, you're talking about adding people. And that's why I say investment. Because writing a plan, hiring someone in the short term to do a plan is one thing, but long-term administration, where you have to drill down into these various communities or neighborhoods and monitor them and process these forms with the businesses, that's that's something that that I have some concern with. Um, which is thinking this could be an add-on for planning. Now, for someone else, I don't know, but for us, that's my concern. Is there's an administrative component? that I think is where you start talking about, is it worth the investment? Mr. Danforth, does the state offer any assistance um, in the development of these zones in any way? Does the state offer any assistance to someone like you or to the county other than to the potential employer? I've seen them set up where um, it looks like technical questions would go to a representative at the state and then local form, you know, admin type questions stay here locally. Um, I've seen DCA have that relationship where they even advertise it on like the county's website where it's like if it's these questions go here, if it's these questions you can stay here. Um, I believe DCA will be able to provide us with here are examples of where this is done and a plan that was performed that we prefer, like a model plan. Um, but it's still it still, I think, would be on Lyons County to provide the general administration marketing and reporting and for us to prepare that urban redevelopment plan would, I believe, be our responsibility. Even if they handed us a model ordinance, it's fill in the blanks, and I don't think they're going to do that because this is how, these are, the ones that I've seen are community specific. So, for example, this area in the community, you would have to go boots on the ground and start tracking jobs and development with pictures. I mean, Reporting. So that I, I think we would still have some of that responsibility. I think they want to help. They seem to be open to this program, but I, I think that we still have some responsibility. Mr. Powell, what, what would be the advantage of of um, these opportunity zones versus what the industrial authority is able to do now? Well, that that's my biggest my biggest thing is I mean it looks good on paper, but until you overlay where's the infrastructure, where's the support, most of the areas that are highlighted are very rural ag based areas. So you're not gonna have water sewer capacity out in those areas for industrial development or a whole lot of economic development. So you would have to overlay this with Mike Allen's overlays to see are there any overlaying areas because the, the chances of us being able to realistically support massive development in any of these regions would probably be very, very, very slim. So uh, there might be some areas up in closer that it, it could, we could work with the industrial authority. That's the other thing too, is we would need to overlay this with what the industrial authority has and what they're already doing because the interior perimeter areas are already called into an enterprise zone in a lot of cases. 
Yeah, my comment with that as I'm listening and thinking along is that maybe this is more of an issue that the industrial authority may already have their arms around from the standpoint of when they get ready to talk to a prospect that enterprise the possibility of these areas for redevelopment, that's already a tool that they have in their toolbox that they know that they will be able to offer these tax credits based on the location of where they would probably put it, you know, offer to put a uh, prospect. So I think that uh, for one thing, we would they would say get their plan or what they think about it. And is this something that they're already considering to use if they're if they're talking to the prospect? Because we may just be having some redundancy here, though. Would you know, no need in, in, in reinventing the wheel if it's something that. Uh, the industrial authority may already have as a tool in their toolbox. The, the, the job tax credit status is, is pretty typical for this area anyway, which is one of our bigger selling points as, you know, Lowndes County as a community is the job, job tax credit. So I know that that is already utilized by most of the major employers in town. Um, you know, now if there were certain areas that we could go in and identify and create a critical opportunity type zone or something like that, that might be different, but I don't know enough about how the state would structure something like this to allow us to go in and do that in addition to what is already being done. Yeah, and I think again, uh, you have to be very cognizant of the fact that as it's already said, where do we have our water infrastructure? Where do we have uh, our water, our sewer, uh, those sort of things, and as well as areas such as even electrical, uh, the utility companies, what do they have available? Do they have the ability for, uh, to be able to serve a major manufacturing facility off of federal rural lines? Right. They may have to rebuild their whole infrastructure makes and change. So. Mr. Pritchard, is, uh, we typically use the WIG for paying, or is that uh, correct? Is it beyond the scope of an LB grant to um, handle infrastructure, utility infrastructure, water and sewer. You can use LMIG for that, but you cannot. LMIG is specifically for, are there any state level, statewide grants that assist yeah. the counties? Yeah, you do EDA grants and things like that. But I mean, <coughs> it's one of those things where they pretty much require you to have a bird in the hand before they commit to the grant. Okay, there's no grant then for grants someone to put it. in infrastructure for future development. Like and more about <coughs> area. That, those are tough. I think the question was directed to Mr. You, you can you can do uh, cheap loans okay. you know, to do your infrastructure um, if you're going into a particular area, just like you've already done that in the past as we you know, spread our utility department into areas that need service. So Yes, you can do that. If, uh, if that's the area you want to go into, I would caution you to uh, not go into areas and put a dry pipe in the ground unless you have something there that you're going to put into. Just incurring the expense of putting pipe in the ground without a, a, uh, a prospect hook up somebody that's going to be there and use X amount of water, uh, you're getting zero return on that investment. Yeah, I guess I, the question was related to, to grants. I, I would not borrow money for something like that. I'm wondering if there are any statewide grants for yeah. sort of underdeveloped economic, underdeveloped economic areas. There may be, uh, we just have not researched it. Thank you. Mike Allen has looked into CBG grants, but has not found an area that will be fruitful for that type of grant. Um, my standpoint, I would, like I said, at the uh, end of the year retreat, uh, I wanted all businesses in the county area to have the same advantage as all the businesses have in the city. In the city, so the city already has no opportunity zone. And so my thing was to try to encourage some development out in those uh, those areas so wanted to help us uh, our tax base 
Two, if you notice, it says 15% uh, unemployment rate. It would help reduce our unemployment that we have in those areas. Um, some of this red area here is in the Lake Park area. As you know, in the Lake Park area, that, that, that center and all that stuff can almost go into the way. Uh, some of the areas up in the uh, Hay Howard area, uh, in which we, we look in the possibly the government and so forth. So I'm just looking uh, forward. And I agree with you. If you look on that map, though, like with the Hay Hire Industrial Park or the Lake Park <laughs> industry areas, they fall outside these zones. And Crawford, you can Lake Park, know that area. The uh, roadway in those areas down there on the Belleville Road, that's outside this city. You're close to it because that looks like I 75 is divided. Uh, and our industrial park would be, you know, uh, Bill Harbin down here be the closest. That's, that's, really, that's, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I really feel like it, the, <coughs> the industrial authority themselves probably already have their arms around it. They're looking for everything that they can take. I think it's worth pursuing, though. I, I, I think it's worth looking at. I think uh, Andrew's presentation on Tuesday included mention of local opportunities as a part of their incentive package. So, um, that's a lot of uh, sheltered forest land, uh, and you've moved further out east, and you do have some, I think, Langdale Forest land or fire station. I do believe that the tail edge of that land might include um, Naylor. Because it gets, gets very close to the Yeah, well, I think it probably, uh, my thought would be that it would warrant moving a little further and and uh, touching base with the industrial authority to see if uh, what they think uh, an opportunity zone, whether it would be a benefit to our community or if this is something that they've already, uh, as I said, they're, they're using in their toolbox already. I think if there's something that they are either not doing, not open to doing, or somehow bound or prevented from doing because of their amendment legislation and we can do it and I think that we we should do it if it's a if it's a good idea. And we can also let them know that you know as, as Mark said a lot of that's within the city limits. So we can reach out to them and let them know that have you run across an opportunity that we as a commission need to look at right. as far as creating additional <coughs> um, capabilities as far as this goes out in the unincorporated the last slide in your presentation is one that shows where the city's current opportunity zones are. Um, that kind of shows you those highlighted areas where they consider their opportunity zones, opportunity zone boundaries, I should say, to, to be. And those are, I mean, that's that's current, current information. The only thing that's not current for us right now is matching our poverty levels with the 2010 census. We've not attained that yet, but we're working on it. Do we have any other questions? Any other discussions that we can move forward with this time? Okay. Let's, uh, let's move on then to our next agenda item.